Hey, I'm Cameron McKenzie at CameronMCNZ on Twitter, and I wanted to talk to you about some basics of blogging in Jekyll on GitHub pages. Now I want to show you how to create a blog, where to put your blog posts, and also how to create a little theme that is going to display your blog and also link to all of the other blog posts in your site. Now this is not going to be a handsome blog layout. It's the basics it's to show you the fundamentals of blogging, how the blog works and how you can kind of link to other pages. But it really is the fundamentals for doing a responsive layout, for putting together a nice bootstrap five theme. Look at some of my subsequent tutorials, but this is going to show you the basics. Get you started with blogging in Jekyll. So far, I've created a number of web pages with Jekyll, and you can see my Jekyll and Bootstrap HTML page right here, which comes from this Jekyll and Bootstrap markdown page right here. But what I haven't done so far is create any blog posts. So what I'd like to do is step you through the process of creating your blog. Now, Jekyll prides convention over configuration, which means if you set things up properly, you don't have to write a bunch of XML or YAML files. Part of setting up your blog is creating a new folder called underscore posts. Your blog posts are supposed to go into this folder, underscore posts, or subfolder of it. And then when you create your blog post, it's supposed to be the year of the blog post, dash the day or month, dash day that you've created it and then the name of the blog post and I'll call my first blog post Jekyll blog post dot MD and so this is the convention now when this web page actually goes into production there'll be subfolders there'll be a subfolder 2020 subfolder 11 subfolder 11 and also Jekyll will recognize that as the published date of the blog so again this is very important it's uh, the way you configure things um, it's, uh, or it's the way it's the convention for writing your blogs and it removes you from having to configure things at a very low level. But anyway, so that creates the basic blog entry. I'm going to write some stuff in here. The first thing I want is I want to put some front matter in here. Now the front matter that I'm going to use is I'm going to use the author tag. I'm going to have the title tag. I'm also going to have a little excerpt. And so in other places on the website where I might link to this page, I'd like to have that excerpt display. So I want to display the title somewhere and say, hey, this, this blog is about this. Check it out. Um, so I'm going to use that a little bit later on. And you'll also notice the layout is blog post. I don't have that layout created yet. Um, I want to create this blog post first and then show you what that layout is. Uh, looks like then create that layout afterwards and then show you the page and then in here you can write any Jekyll that you want take advantage of the Jekyll markdown and so I don't know you can make header tags you can add links I'll emphasize this by putting the underscore around interesting but this essentially creates my very first blog post I'll click commit new file and you see it gets created right there. Now, when that actually comes up, it'll actually be at a URL that looks something like this. I think it'll be Jekyll Bootcraft Fast slash 2011 and Jekyll Blog. Now, this isn't going to work properly because, well, I don't have that. Uh, I don't have that. So as you can see, the build has now happened and I've got the URL slash 2020 slash 11 slash Jekyll blog post dot HTML and that all seems to work, but it's not really doing much for a theme, right? It's just printing out the basic stuff. So the next thing that I need to do is actually create a better theme for my blog post. And I not only want a good theme for the blog post, I want to be able to pull out some interesting pieces of information about the blog, like its post date, maybe its author. We've got that right there. And also put together a link of all the blog posts underneath this so that somebody can navigate from one blog post to another. Okay. And so this layout is supposed to be called blog post. So I'm going to go over into my layouts folder. I'm going to create a brand new file named blogpost.html and in this blogpost.html well I'm going to put the requisite html and head tags and notice that I've got page.title in here I'm going to just open up that other page and display some of the stuff that we had on the post there we've got inside this post we've got a, a field called title so there's page.title should display that 
Also, as we go down, I'm going to go into the body. I'm going to put that title into a, an H1 tag as well inside the body. So there you see we get the title as well being displayed in a header tag. And then I'm also going to display the date. And I'm going to display the date as a, a nice formatted string. And so I've got this Jekyll filter here that I can put on there, this uh, Jekyll element. And it says, hey, I want the page date and I want that to display as a nice handsome string. And I also want the author of the page as well. And notice that the author is described right there. And again, the date is just that layout of what the page was named, 2020-11-11. That should be easy to remember. Now the actual content of the page, it'll go right here. And so that's the content. And so everything that's been put in there, including the emphasized interesting, should go where content is. And then underneath that, I'm just going to put uh, a new heading that says all of the latest posts. And under this, now this is going to be interesting and new and wacky. What I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to create a list, an unordered list. So I'll put a couple of unordered list tags there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new list item for every single blog post. Now, right now there's only one, but you know, soon there will be two and then there will be four and then there will be eight. And the code to do that looks like this. So there's a special property for the site and it is a listing of all the posts in that post folder. So you can say site.posts. That just gives you every single element inside of that post folder, every single post. I can loop through it. This is the end of that for loop down here. And for every entry, I'm going to enter a list item and I'm going to put the post URL along with the post title. And on top of that, I'm going to put that little excerpt. So it'll say in an H2 tag, um, it will say the title, which is my first Jekyll blog. And it'll put that all inside of a clickable link. And then it'll say, hey, check out my first Jekyll blog underneath it right there. And so that's sort of the, I don't know, that's kind of the, the nice little way that we can navigate across all of our different blogs. And then finally, we terminate the body and terminate the HTML code. And then we can save this, commit the new file. And now we have this new layout called blogpost.html. And you can see that's what's referenced right here. Blog post is the layout for this particular post page. That's going to take a while for that to compile. The other thing I'm going to do is I might just go back and create another blog post. So I'm going to add a new file and I will call it the second blog post.md. Maybe I'll put that one on the, the 12th there. I'm going to take a look at uh, the content that was in that first one and do a little bit of a copy and paste because, uh, well, because I'm lazy. <laughs> there we go. But that was the first one, right? Because we want the same blog post. It's the same author. And this is my second Jekyll blog. And we'll say... We'll say this isn't much more interesting. I'm going to do a commit now just to see if I can get the build going, but I want to actually edit that just a little bit more. And I'll say this isn't an easy crazy either, but it's a significant one or second one, I mean. This is my second Jekyll blog post. So there we go. We've now got a little bit of content here. Okay, so now that's done. Now that was just a, a second blog post to emphasize the fact that, yeah, you usually have more than one post, right? You're creating a blog. So hopefully you'll go in there every day and become very, very popular with your blogging. Uh, we do have this file here. And when I reference this file now, hopefully that new layout will apply. So this is what the page looked like when I initially rendered it without really any layout. Now I click refresh and you see now that is a heading. We also have actually I'm going to bring this layout up over here and just take a look at the blog post laying layout. You can see that the title goes in an H1 tag, my first Jekyll blog. We've got the date and we've got the author, November 11th, Remembrance Day in Cameron. We've got the actual content that's pushed in right here. And then we've got another H1 tag, probably should make that H2 tag for latest posts. And then we've got a link to each post. There's my second Jekyll blog. There's my first Jekyll blog. And that's all produced by this for loop that 
prints out lists items for every site on the blog. And there you go. That's how you actually make blog entries and click on this, click on this and actually create a little theme that allows you to display all of your different blogs. Now I'm going to go a little bit further in the future and create a responsive uh, layout for the blogs. And then I'm even going to use one that's really handsome that has proper navigation and responsiveness all done through Bootstrap 5. But to get the basics of how to create a blog and how to create a theme that displays all of the blogs, well, you couldn't do much more better than that. And there you go. That's the basics of creating a blog and creating a blog theme in GitHub pages. Now, if you enjoyed that tutorial, why don't you head over to the serverside.com. I'm the editor in chief over there. We've got lots of great tutorials on Git and GitHub and anything to do with enterprise software development. If you're interested in my personal antics, you can follow me on Twitter at CameronMCNZ and subscribe on YouTube.